Hey everyone, welcome back. About to kick off episode two of the latest series on using Azure Container Apps with Mass Transit. Um, if you didn't catch episode one, definitely check it out because it's gonna give you kind of the initial setup and links to the, to the docs, how to get set up, how to get up and running. Definitely kind of set the stage. I'm gonna kick off the next episode talking about how we're using Mass Transit and taking that sample to the next level. So I'm, I'm tagging the, the videos with the code base as it existed in the repo. So if you check, there'll be tags for like episode one, episode two. And just in case you wanna jump back to the way the code looked, because obviously master is gonna evolve as we add capabilities. So let's jump into the solution real quick. Um, what I've done now is I've added a unit test, which is basically the same as the sample web application factory unit test that allows me to verify that the API works as expected. Now the API of course is over here in this program CS and you'll notice I did a little bit of cleanup. So let's kind of cover that real quick. First of all, I can't stand the default logging. So I put a use serializer uh, or use serialog configuration and I changed some log levels so that I don't get excessive logging but I get enough to know that the service is running and I'll cover that a little bit in a second. Uh, with the serial log configuration, that's all good. I also kind of normalized the mass transit configuration. And the mass transit configuration has a couple of overloads to where I can add components or I can actually configure the way the bus is set up. I'm using the standard host context get connection string here, which pulls this out of our secret when we're up in production. And I'm also configuring a couple things on messages, which I'll cover in a later episode. Um, so you can see my API isn't doing anything at this point, and that handler that was handling the submit order has been moved to a separate worker, which is running in a separate container within the same um, container apps environment, and I'll cover that as well. So at first, to, to run this unit test, I can just run it. You can see that in this case, I've used the handler syntax to put a simple handler that says, hey, when the API uses that request client, to submit the order, let's just return a simple order submission accepted because I want to be able to handle that. And when we look at the code in the order controller that does that post, we can see that it does the post on the submit order, gets the order submission accepted and expects everything to work. And of course the unit test shows that it does. Because we're using that unit test, we're using the uh, add mass transit test harness, it's replacing all the Azure service bus stuff with the in-memory transport for you. So a nice clean way to, to not have to modify your startup in the API project, but yet still do the in-memory testing. So perfect end-to-end -end test, good example to try out there. That all works. Now let's look at that separate worker project. The separate worker is super simple. Literally all I did at this point was I moved that submit order handler into a separate project. And I'm putting a simple log message consuming submit order and then returning that new submission accepted. Very simple, I'm injecting that logger through an argument. This is using that, that add handler syntax that we put in in 805. Um, yeah, so same use serial log. I put these into a shared assembly. So I now have a sample.shared that has a lot of these dependencies in it, which really dried up the code between the API and the worker. And anytime you're building a large app like that, you're gonna kind of have that sort of thing. This did require a change to the Docker file. I had to add the sample.shared folder to that to be copied when I do the restore. And then when I do the publish release and all that, everything is great. You'll see also that I have another Docker file for the sample worker. And I've used that to build and deploy the container for that as well. Now that worker is not using ASP.NET yet. So this expose is kind of annoying, but let's not worry about that for now because we aren't actually putting any API endpoints on that. We will cover health checks and health monitoring in a subsequent episode, and I'll show how to set that up. Um, so now we have our API and our worker, and we have two separate deploys. So the first build deploy is just for sample API. You can see that it looks at these paths, and if there's any changes in API or shared or the build file itself, it will do that deployment to the Azure Container apps and deploy that new instance, put it in the Azure Container Registry, and then actually do an update on the app to the latest version of the container. The worker does a very similar thing, but it's looking in the sample worker folder instead of the sample API folder. And then of course, if shared has changed, it would be updated as well. So that's all the changes in the code repository at this point. If I jump over to Postman, 
I can see now, now let's look at my state right now because I want to kind of cover this because this is super useful. When I go and look at the container apps, I can see my sample container app. This is the one that's API. You know, unfortunately the name is kind of lame, but whatever. If I go into metrics and I pick just a standard metric for replica count, we can see that I am at zero. There are no replicas running, which means I am not being charged a cent for this container app. And the same thing when I go to sample worker, which has already been deployed. If I look at the metrics for that as well, and I still haven't figured out how to get like multiple of these showing up in the same thing. Oh, for some reason it has one running. Okay, no, yeah. I wonder why one's running. It was scaled down for a while. I wonder if something kicked it up. Maybe I touched the queue. I don't know. Shouldn't be running. I wonder why. Aggregation. I don't want an aggregation. I want current. Average? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. That's weird. Why would I want an average? I don't want max. I don't want min. I just want replica count. I don't want max. I want some. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder why I kicked one up. Anyway, not a big deal. I'm not going to cry. <clears throat> Hopefully it's not costing me too much money. Uh, anyway, so rock and roll. We're going to go over to Postman. We're going to run our test. And we are going to send that request. Now, because this is a cold start, it's having to spin up that API, do the initial bus start, all of that fun stuff. So it took what? Nine seconds. So nine seconds to cold start those instances and get that response on the first request. Now let me do a subsequent request. Boom, 159 milliseconds, 95 milliseconds, 84 milliseconds, 79 milliseconds. We're rocking at this point. We're, we're in a full operational state right now. So that's good to know. Let's go look at what we see. We still see our replica count here as, uh, it should be one, I'm gonna guess. Uh, yep, we're still at one. I don't know why it shows 60. This is weird. I don't understand that one. Let's look at the log stream. So when you go into log stream on here, you can actually look at the logs coming out of it. And you can see this instance was actually just started up at 1419, which is a little bit ago, 1420. Oh, it's been running for a while, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, here's the requests I just did. You can see that they're in there. They're logged out. All that stuff is there. Nice, cool, great. That's my logs. If I go back to my API container app, we can look at the log stream of that and we can see something similar. We should see that the bus was started at just a few seconds ago and that those requests came in. So perfect, that was a cold start. We'll see this actually shut down a little bit. Uh, if we look at the logs logs, <clears throat> we can actually see like if we look at the last 30 minutes, and do a run of this. We should be able to see that the logs that we, yeah, so here's the consuming of the supporter. Here's the startup of that container app in the separate one. Uh, we haven't actually seen this spin down yet. So if we go back over here and look at the sample worker, <clears throat> this should be scaling to zero unless for some reason the scaling rule got lost. Yeah, so if the queue like this 10, it should connigger off the, trigger off the connection. Yeah, I'll have to keep an eye on that and see if it actually spins down. It should be scaling to zero because it showed zero earlier. I'm not sure why it spun back up. Um, yeah, so, so that's the process running in my separate worker again because we're still running. Requests should be fast. There's 74 milliseconds round trip. And that includes a message going through Azure Service Bus. Uh, if we go and look at the Azure Service Bus namespace, we can see that in that namespace, we have, should be a couple queues. We have the response queue for the API client. We have the submit order for the, um, for the API and for the endpoint in the worker. And then the topics, we should just have the topic for the submit order request that gets published. And then the subscription should be routing that to the submit order queue. So perfectly what we would expect there. No problems at all. Um, I wonder if I can like do a ton of these like, like super fast and get it to actually create another instance. I don't know if it would actually get there. We can look at the logs and see if it actually gets, thinks it's busy enough to actually spin up a second instance. Um, if we look at our container app and look at the metrics, we should be able to look at replica count. And at some point I got it to bump to two, but yeah, this is not even doing enough to get it to go above one. So I think we're okay. Might need to 
yeah don't know if it'll bump up i'll have to check the logs later and see if it kicks up but anyway totally cool those both of those services are deploying if i look in github i actually see my deployments run separate and you can see that when i push it doesn't have to build everything like when i did a change here just in worker it only redeployed the worker so that was pretty convenient <clears throat> i do have a change here um in my git history so when i do the next push it's actually a change to shared so it should actually push both but anyway it, it's nice to be able to just deploy one of the other containers so that's kind of where we're at now the code has been updated on github it has like i said the latest commits um, and i will tag that as well but so far so good now we're running two separate containers within the same container app environment and we're passing messages between them so pretty stoked thanks for joining for episode two next episode we'll cover some more stuff i don't know what yet but when i get there you'll see it come out so thanks for joining we'll catch you next time